Most broken only one water coolers can be fixed for one dollar and very quickly. So welcome back at the Motion PSUs and here we are with the only one water cooling refill and refurbishment guide. Now you guys asked specifically for this so I thought I'd make one. So first of all let's diagnose if and when this is applicable okay so this works if you have a broken only one water cooler with a working pump if the pump is broken there's no fix in it okay so how do you know if your pump is working well first of all you need to be able to hear it now if you hear it and if it sounds like a Volkswagen Polo 1.9 TDI this is still applicable so that's great but if you can't hear the pump spinning if you touch your tubes and your tubes are not vibrating, then you have a broken pump. So you may want to check your cable, check your connection to the pump, but if your pump is not spinning, there's no point in refilling the actual only one because it's simply not moving the water around. Now it may be clogged, so if you want, you can still do this, give it a look, but if your pump has electrical issues, it requires different troubleshooting, which I can do. It's more in depth if you guys want, so let me know. This works either if you hear your pump making bad noises or if your PC basically dramatically overheats. I'm not talking two or three degrees worse than when it was new. I'm talking if it's now performing like 20 degrees worse, then it's probably just the water inside your only one which needs replacing. Now, what is not a sign of a broken only one is this. So can you hear the water slashing around? This does not mean that the only one is broken. It just means there's some air inside and the air inside is purposefully left by manufacturers because water expands. So they leave a bit of room, okay? This is not a problem. With that said, let's actually get into the tutorials. So what you're gonna need is some distilled water. Now, why are we not using some proper water cooling fluid is because simply distilled water is the most neutral thing you can put into here and manufacturers already use premium stuff for the coolers and we don't want to risk that our fluid is gonna react with what's inside here already so distilled water doesn't react with anything so it's gonna work great and it also has a very good heat transfer so this is what we want now if you're doing a complete flush of the only one meaning you're emptying the only one completely then you may want to use a specific fluid with anti-corrosion stuff in it and uh, you can just use regular water cooling stuff basically just buy it on amazon and we leave some links down below but distilled water costs one dollar and it's gonna be plenty fine you need a setup to refill your only one and you need the pump to be higher than the only one so in my case i have an arctic water cooler okay it has tough tubes to bend these by the way they never break this was broken by human error okay and uh, what you want to do is just place the only one on your knees or just on a chair next to you and then you want to have the pump higher and now you want to open up the actual block and give it a look now, if it is full of gunk, corroded and stuff, then you want to flush it. If not, you just want to refill it. Now, to refill it, we need to power the only one. And to do so, you can either plug the only one connector into your PC or just connect it to your power supply by using a 4-pin to Molex or to SATA adapter. I will be doing the second one because it's just simpler to switch on and off the PSU as I'm doing the refill. But you can also just plug this in your PC if you don't have extra hardware. The only thing you need is literally distilled water, your only one, and a screwdriver, okay? It's gonna be super easy. So with that said, let's get started. So here's my professional setup. We have some tissues just in case, distilled water, the actual only one, and then our power supply shorted out, connected here, which we can now turn on. The fan is gonna spin, and this is gonna give us power. And we now have a Molex adapter to a CPU fan. We plug the pump in, and as you can see, the only one starts to work. Now we can actually get to it. Now I'm just putting it on my knees because it's simpler. And also this one is very hard to hold still, so I'm gonna need two hands. And now we are simply unscrewing the back, which sometimes is not so simple. Now pro tip is to unscrew it a little bit um, and then actually go for it. Now we take off all the screws and we can now take off the plate. Now it's gonna have a pretty strange smell to it, that's normal. And if we analyze this one closely, which I don't know if you can pick up on camera, uh, it does actually look like it's a little bit gunked up. Nothing crazy, but I can see some green spots there. 
So since I have it open, I'm gonna go ahead and being very careful, I'm gonna wipe off the parts which I don't like. Yep, this is definitely slightly corroded. Now, however, this is not as bad to require a complete flush. So we're gonna be fine with just adding some water to it. How do we do it? Well, I like to do it with the pump running. So I now connect my pump to the actual power supply right there. And as you can see, air bubbles are gonna start to come out. Now, pro tip to turn it on and off is to simply use your power supply switch. So do not try to undo this all the time. And a lot of air bubbles are gonna come out. So what you want to do now is you want to top it off with some clean distilled water. And now I'm gonna show you uh, how I do it once, but I'm gonna do it like 20 times off camera. So the process is very simple. With everything turned off, you get some water, you add it right there. Now, once it's full, you turn on your power supply and the pump is gonna suck in the water and push out the air bubbles, as you can see. Now, what you want to do is move the radiator because you want the air bubbles to come out. So you want to move the radiator and as you can see, the air bubbles are coming out just like this. Now you basically want to move around the radiator as much as you can to move the air bubbles around. Just how I'm doing. You don't want the water to come out, you just want the actual air bubbles to come out. And then once they all came out, you want to fill it again, just like this, okay? And keep doing this until you see no more air bubbles coming out. Now, once it actually is full and with no air bubbles, you can go ahead and close it back up. Now, it's okay if you have a little bit more water, okay, that's actually preferable because it's the only way to make sure it's actually 100% full. So you wanna realign this and basically screw it down again and we are gonna be done. I recommend you go X-wise for the screws. And just like that, you're fine. Now already, if we turn it on and listen to it, the noise is gone. However, I'm gonna let it cycle through a little bit more, let you guys take a proper listen. So here we are with the conclusions. The only one is now running perfectly, right next to me, being very quiet. And that literally took me 20 minutes. Anyone can do it. In this case, it was just four screws. Sometimes the actual cold plate has a bit more screws to it. Either way, it's a very simple fix. And I think all you guys should do it. At least give it a shot before throwing away your only one water cooler. Another way to refill it would be to have some water and to basically dunk the pump in the water like this. That also works, but you need to be careful for the water not to touch the pump because even though distilled water is non-conductive, it's not a good idea to soak live electronics in water. Even though this channel is called Demotin PSUs, we do it with electronics turned off usually. But if you have any tips of your own in terms of fixing a broken all-in-one, drop them down below. Let me know if you did this successfully. And as usual, if you liked the video, drop a like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.